All right. Another subject that I feel morally obligated to touch upon is teams. Uh, I see a lot of comments. I'm going to get some friends together and we're going to make a game. I really, really suggest if you're just beginning or even if you think you can do it yourself, don't don't get in a team. Don't start a team. It's just, it's really a bad idea to be honest. Uh, there's multiple reasons. I mean, yeah, of course you're going to get mad at them. Sometimes you're going to want to work. They're going to want to screw around. That's that's obvious, you know. But there there are other reasons. First of all, if you're just starting, the learning curve for a programmer is about ten times more than an artist or a musician. I'm not saying their job is any easier because it's not, but the learning curve itself, it takes a programmer much more time to get to the level where they can work on a game that does for an artist or musician and that can cause a lot of problems if you're just, just starting in a team um, also working in a team like we we don't get together and make the game all the time that's not really how it works uh, during the week we sit at home alone not seeing each other not in contact with each other and we get our stuff done and then on the weekends we meet up and we, we integrate our stuff, you know? It's still a very antisocial process, game creation itself. Uh, you have to be able to sit alone in a dark room and think about this stuff. You can't just create the entire game together. It doesn't work. And in order to be able to do that, you all have to be self-motivated. And finding a team that believes in the same thing you do and shares your vision is actually, it's really hard. Um, some recommendations I have, first of all, Make sure you personally know your team. Make sure that they're not going to get their feelings hurt when you complain at them. Like, Peter, I hate you, your Perl scripts suck, and you play Donkey Kong Country like a woman. What do you say for yourself? See? He's not mad. You need somebody that you can pretty much bitch at. You have to be able to lay it out for them. And if... If their feelings are hurt, then they probably don't need to be on your team. Because when people are putting this much effort into it, and people are this ambitious about something they believe in, that can be something that gets in the way. Another thing that's very important is I recommend if you are going to have a team, your team members need to be knowledgeable all around. That's a problem we have with the previous artists. The Let's say your artist doesn't understand what your engine is and is not capable of. They want a boss with, like, giant arms that, like, do this, and they want, like, sprites that are weird sizes that your engine can't handle, and they want to do all this crazy stuff that is not feasible programming-wise. And they don't understand anything about programming, so you can't really explain to them why it's not possible. I mean, that causes a lot of trouble. Uh, our artist right now, Chris, he kn he knows C++. You know, he's not really, he's not a programmer on the project. But if I told him, look, man, your sprite is the wrong size. We can't use this. It's not going to work in the engine. He'll understand. He knows how to make his art implement or integrate with what we're doing. And at the same time, we understand what is required of him to make his tiles. They have to tile correctly. We understand we have to make it easy, his job easier for him like he has to make his our job easier for us. And I really think that you need a team that is not, they focus in one area, but they're also knowledgeable of the other areas of game development. And that's just my recommendation to you. Alright, so now that everybody's ready to run off and go make a game, um, I thought I'd give you some direction. I'm sure everybody's heard this before, everybody's read it. Don't be overly ambitious, okay? Everyone's like, oh, because that's what I thought, too, when I first started. But it's true, really. You, If you're doing this, you're obviously an ambitious person. But don't let that get the best of you. Every project I've ever not finished or every project that I've seen fail is usually a result of over-ambition or, you know, reaching too far, wanting to do too much with it. Especially if it's your first game, you really need to start simple. Do something like... You know, do, do Tetris, okay? I know you're all like, oh, that's, that sucks. But really, it doesn't. If you can finish it, then you'll be ready to move on to the next level. And then you'll have something to show in your portfolio or something. Uh, I have a bunch of unfinished games, you know. They compile, but they're not much to show off because 
usually I, I, I tend to do too much and then slowly, you know, you sort of lose motivation when you're not reaching your own standards. But I think you need to start off simple and then slowly progress harder and harder. Don't, I see so many people, oh, I'm going to go make an RPG. It's going to be epic with, uh, you know, AI and multiple party members and action-based and uh, it's going to be an open GL. No, I don't recommend that at all. Start off, make Pac-Man or Space Invaders, you know, do something like that because I feel like that's, that's way more realistic. You can actually do that. And then once you've done that, you can do something like, uh, I'm going to make a Mario Brothers clone, you know, that's cool, yeah, you're working your way up. And I, I think that's definitely the way to go. Don't reach too far with your first projects.